please remember to check out our other videos and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. This video is brought to you in association with Just EVs, where this car and many other new and used EVs are available for sale and test drives. Hi folks and welcome to the Mercedes EQC. Did you see that? It just weighted the seatbelt and that is what this car is all about. So I could dazzle you with figures and tell you all about the range and things like that and I will touch on that but there's plenty of information out there on the internet about what this car is capable of. I've discharged to 90% and I'm showing 231 miles of range and I'll be honest I think that's quite reliable. I've driven it now for the um, best part of 500 miles. Kate's also driven it, absolutely loves it, as do I. And it's just an absolute all round sensational bit of kit. It really is. I picked this up from Southampton last week. I drove it home. I stopped at the Instavolt. I didn't need to, I just wanted to try the charging speeds. And on the Instavolt unit, it was charging at 78 kilowatts, which is fine. I could have got away with about a 15 minute stop but I decided to stop and just see what it did right the way up because I'm just interested in that sort of thing and it held 77 kilowatts right up to about 82 percent and then it dropped down to 50 and it held 50 right up to 95 percent and then and then I bowed out so from that side of things it's it's really good and it will charge up to 110 kilowatts I believe although I've not seen that myself in terms of miles per kilowatt hour over the time I've had it I've averaged 2.7 and that seems pretty consistent it drops and raises a little bit but it doesn't do anything more or less than that in my experience and that's okay because it has got an 80 kilowatt hour usable battery pack it's actually closer to 90 in terms of actual energy which probably uh, explains why it can charge at such a high rate for such a long time and that's enough for this, it really is. At, at 200 odd miles, you are ready to stop. But that's not what this car's about. This is a completely different drive to anything I've driven on the electric market. I'm, I'm almost lost for words to, to describe to you how refined, how smooth, and how nicely the EQC gets down the road. I am not using a mic, you'll notice. I'm using the mic on the GoPro, and there's a reason for that. I wanna try and demonstrate to you how quiet the car is. Now, in terms of acceleration, if I put my foot down, oh, that's at 70 miles an hour already. I, all right, I was doing 45 then, but it, it is like a rocket. But it's still five seconds to 60, which is kind of slow in the world of EVs, fast EVs anyway. But this is two and a half tons, 2,495 kilos. So it's got a lot of weight to shift, but it does it in a kind of sublime, gentle way you put your foot down and it says yeah okay let's go and off you go and it's a nice punch but it's also kind of sedate in its own kind of way the interior is as highly finished as you can imagine uh it's got led piping around that you you can't really see in the day but it, at night it's absolutely beautiful it's full led all the way around it does a funky pattern on the headlights when you start it up it's just nice and I would own one of these if I could afford it, but I can't because they are very, very, very expensive. I think this particular model was £78,000 brand new, so that is well out of our price range, over 20 grand more than our Tesla Model 3, which we've got on PCP, by the way. Uh, we, we don't own it, but uh, yeah, really, really strong pricing. And I'll show you something else it's got. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Turn on driver's massage. Driver's seat massage is turned on. And then up my back right now, I've got a massage that's... Okay, that's probably not the best massage I've ever had in my life, but it's probably enough to keep me awake and relax my shoulders and my back. All very good. It's actually got its own driver's pilot, which I'm, I'm quite impressed with. I mean, it's probably not quite as good at keeping the lines as perhaps the Tesla autopilot, but it's okay and it's definitely okay for motorways. 
but it also does automatic lane change. All you do is you flick the indicator on and it'll flick you into another lane, flick the indicator on again and it'll pull you across. Obviously it's got adaptive cruise control, so it's, it is a really relaxing place. If I look ahead now, I can see that it's telling me to put my hands on the steering wheel, which I've just done, and that's in the head-up display, which I will try and overlay some footage, but it's very difficult to, to video that because it flashes due to the frame rate. But it's beautiful. I can see the speed of the road I'm on. I can see where the cruise control is set to 70, the steering, and I can see which direction I'm traveling in, and that can be altered as well, as can the display. You can have this in three different modes. You can have it in sports, classic, and there's another one on there. All very nice and obviously all TFT. It's just, it's finished to such a high level, it really is. And I can say that I'm honestly gonna be sad to take this back because it's beautiful. Okay, let me touch on the bad points. There aren't many, I think three, maybe four in all. The size of the car from the outside dimensions, it's quite long, it's got a huge bonnet, uh, which is kind of, doesn't really need it because it's an EV, but it's based on a, a, another internal combustion model, so they're kind of stuck with that. And that makes it kind of difficult to see the front end, although you do get all round cameras, which kind of protect you from, from that. It is kind of big and Kate struggled with that a little bit, even though the overall footprint is only similar to that of a Model S and she managed for four years with that okay. But I think maybe the height kind of sort of threw her off a little bit, but she said she could get used to that. The other thing is, is it has air suspension and you don't seem to have any control over it and it is a little bit wallowy in some situations. It doesn't like speed bumps and it doesn't like undulation in the ground. It sometimes gets a little bit caught out, which I didn't think it would, but it does. But it's not a biggie. The third point is, it's got these side steps on, which are an option and can be removed. So consider that before I moan. And Kate's caught a leg on it twice. One, she really hurt herself. She got a nice big bruise across her shin. And I also catch my leg getting in and out as well, which is kind of, kind of frustrating, but then, like I say, you just wouldn't option them in. But the big thing here, and more interesting, is this is quite a big car, but actually when you look in the back, or when you get in the back, if you sat behind me now, bearing in mind I'm five foot ten, my, you know, I'm not a big guy, you will struggle for the knee room back there. The headroom's okay, knee room's not the best, it's not the strongest point. We have had Florence in the back, getting her in's no problem, but actually she can quite easily kick the back of this seat here, which you don't want to do in an, an expensive Mercedes. But again, anybody six foot or over sitting in the back is gonna have a bit of an issue with, with passengers in the front. So that is definitely something to consider. The boot, the boot's high, but it's big. Uh, we can get our running buggy in there with no problems. Get it in that way we can get it in that way you can chuck them on top of each other it's 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 great it's no issues there at all okay let's talk about the regen now regen's a big thing for me i'm i'm a real fan of it i like it to be I like it to be strong i like to be able to get as much back as i can and the eqc doesn't disappoint at all so you, it's got flappy paddles on the back of the steering wheel and that allows you to alter the amount of regen you want and it can all be programmed to your profile, the profile that sets the steering wheel and your seat position and all that business. And if I just flap it a couple of times here, it gives me a D negative negative again. And that is really strong fierce regen and it, it stops the car probably as quick as you could brake hard that's the only way I can describe it, is right up there in terms of strong regen like the i3. And bearing in mind this is two and a half ton, it gives you a lot of back and it's also got a nice gauge that spins around and, and shows you what you're getting back as a percentage. And I do like that, but on the flip side, you can just turn the regen off by just flipping the other side and now I'm just coasting along and not regening anything. So nice and easy to control, I do, I do like that. If you pull the left hand paddle, you can set it to auto, and then that uses the radar to dictate what's in front. So you can set the speed, and it will do pretty much what it would do anyway if you were using if you were using the cruise control. But it's also nice when you're not using the cruise control and you're driving around town, it just sees what, what's going on and it does it all for you. It makes it very, very relaxing. Again, another plus point for the Merc. 
So something else I've noticed about the EQC in the time we've had it is how good the adaptive uh, speed awareness is. So I'm currently doing 40 because that's the speed limit along this road and right in front of me is a national speed limit and I'm not going to touch anything except the steering wheel and as soon as it sees that sign it will speed up to 60 and there it goes. It's just seen 60 and away the car pulls. Now that's a really good thing especially in this car because Although this isn't a bad point, it's a point that you need to be aware of, is when you're doing 70 miles an hour in the EQC, it really feels like you're doing 45, 50, because it's such a sublime kind of drive. And it means that it's very easy to just wander over a speed limit. And that, three points and a hundred pound fine and your insurance premium going up, I mean, that's a lifesaver just there. And it works absolutely brilliantly. Well impressed by that. The Mercedes EQC also incorporates a clever reverse camera housed in the boot release. This means it's almost never dirty. The tailgate, as you've seen, has a power lift feature that can be controlled from the key, the tailgate itself, or released from inside the car, which is more than useful. The reverse camera is crystal clear and makes up part of the best four-way bird's eye view system you'll ever use in any car. It's loaded full of safety and convenience features as you'd expect from Mercedes-Benz, and the voice recognition system. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Play the radio. As you can see, it's faultless, and it mitigates the use of your hands for almost all situations. Add to this that it charges at a really good rate and can utilize the ever-growing network of high-power CCS chargers. It makes long-distance travel a real pleasure. But again, I come back to the way it drives. It really is something else with comfort levels you'd expect, albeit it does not come cheap. Hi folks, so that's me done. I've done 158 miles to get down to my location and it showed me 131 miles left on the range, almost exactly half of the charge remaining. I had driven 35 miles before that and I only charged it to 95. So I think we've got to just guesstimate the figures, but in my head, I'm working out an 80 kilowatt hour usable pack probably 240 miles and that is not bad and remember this supports some pretty quick charging rates especially on the Arnity network and um, these have been seen charging at 110 kilowatts so it's it's very 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 usable and I'd be more than happy to run this up and down the country no problems at all not mostly because it's so god it's so comfortable it's it's honestly the most comfortable car I think I've ever driven and I, I, and I say that honestly I don't think there's anything out there which will compete with this, especially as an EV anyway, not at the moment. It, it knocks the socks off pretty much everything. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, sad to see it go, but it's got to go because I've got to pick up a uh, Polestar, which is sat just over there. So thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you probably in a few days with another episode. So bye for now.